In the last class, we talked about elimination reactions and we started seeing the mechanism for E2 reactions. Now let's see the mechanisms for E1 reactions. E1 reactions share a lot of features with uh, SN1 reactions. For example, E1 reactions have first order kinetics, meaning that they are unimolecular. Remember, SN1 reactions were the same, where only the alkyl halide concentration was important in the rate, because that was the rate determining step, and that, and that will tell us how fast the reaction could go. So that first step will determine the, the whole rate of the reaction. So the rate of an E1 reaction is determined by the K multiplied by the alkyl halide. This reaction, as I said, is unimolecular. That's where the E1, that's where that one comes from. Not from the fact that happens in two steps. Remember that that is not intuitive, but from the fact that only one uh, of the reagents is involved in the rate of the reaction. In E1 reactions, the same as SN1 reactions, the reaction will happen through a carbocation. Once the living group leaves and that carbocation forms, the nucleophile will come and attack the carbocations in the case of SN1 reactions. And in the case of E1 reaction, the base will come, take, one, take the hydrogen, and that will uh, form the double bond that we usually get in eliminations. So the difference between SN1 and E1 is that in SN1 we talk about nucleophiles and that in E1 we talk about bases. The same goes for SN2 and E2. The mechanism for E1 reaction goes like this. The first step is shared with SN1 reactions. The living group will leave and that will be the rate determining step, that formation of the carbocation. Then the base will come and take the proton. Look at this. Water is a bad base. It's not a strong base because strong bases, we'll talk about it later, but strong bases as strong nucleophiles usually have negative charges. So water will come, take that hydrogen, and will form the pi bond. So this is the mechanism of an E1 reaction. In an E2 reaction, the living group comes and the beta proton is removed at the same time. But in an E1, the living group will come off first, so it will leave, and then the beta proton will be removed. Here we have the diagram for an E1 reaction. So you see we have here our starting material that looks like this. Um, and then the, so, Look at that, we have all of those, right? So we should have the living group leave first, so that will happen first. Then the carbocation will form, and then uh, the base will come and extract that proton forming the double bond. So this is how, so probably here we're missing a CL, right? Because the living group has to leave, so here, there the living group is um, is um, missing so the living group will leave then the base will come and abstract that beta uh, hydrogen and then it will form the double bond so the rate determining step remember is the one that has the largest activation energy and then we go through the intermediate that intermediate is the carbocation that in this case is a very stable carbocation because it's tertiary so it's very substituted so the more substituted it is, the more stable it is. And then the second step, which is the abstraction, the base will come, take that hydrogen and form the double bond. That second step will take less energy. That's why this activation energy will be smaller. And as I just mentioned, the effect of the alkyl halide uh, in E1 reactions is very important because primary alkyl halides will form this very unstable carbocation. But tertiary alkyl halides, such as this one, where the um, halogen is connected to a, a quater that tertiary uh, carbon, 
will form that tertiary carbocation that will be very stable, right? Remember, alkyl groups will donate electron density. So in this case, those three R's will be donating electrons to the positive charge. So that's why that is stabilized. And in the case of the base, uh, we the base is going to help us determine be, the difference between E1 or E2. So a strong base, such as these bases that have negative charges, they will favor E2 reaction. So we have hydroxide, we can have OME, we can also have OET. Those are strong bases. And the weaker bases, such as water or methanol, ethanol, will favor E1 reactions because they will not react so fast and they give enough time for the carbocation to form. Now, the same rule that applies for E2 reactions will apply for E1 reactions. So, whenever you have different types of beta hydrogens, you see in this case we have two of the beta ones, and one of the beta two, actually you have three here, right? And two here and two here, right? So um, whenever you have two types of betas that can be taken away by the base, the most favorable, favorable one, the one that will happen, the one that will give us the major product, is going to be the one that results in a more substituted alkene, such in this, such in this case. So that's the Zaitsev product. Right, and then we can also get some of the more uh, the least substituted alkene, which will be this one. So here you see that alkene only has one H, means that it's tri substituted. It has one, two, and three. And right here we have two H's, meaning that this alkene is di substituted. So this is the minor product, and it's also called Hoffman. That's the Hoffman product and that's the Zaitsev product. Sometimes the Hoffman product is also called anti Zaitsev. And here you have a summary of E1s. Uh, it's, remember that it's a first order reaction that will happen in two steps, that more substituted alkyl halides will react faster in an SN1 fashion, that the stronger the base, uh, so, sorry, the weaker the base will favor E1 and the stronger the base will favor E2. And the better living group, as usual, makes the reaction uh, happen faster. And in this case, polar protic solvents that uh, solvate the intermediates are useful. The interesting thing about polar protic solvents is that they are methanol, ethanol, water. So these polar protic solvents can function as both the solvent and the base. So often you will see the rea E1 reactions to only show you methanol and that's why they or the reason for that is because they will act as both the solvent, in this case polar protic solvent that is what we want because remember that polar protic solvents will stabilize both the, car the carbocation and the carboanion, so the plus and the minus, right? Because the protons will stabilize the, the negative charge and the lone pairs on the oxygen will stabilize the positive charge. So, and then at the same time, methanol can react as a base. You see here, we have water and we have methanol, so those will be my base. So these are the solvents that we usually use for E1 reactions.